to do work with the back body chain. So the posterior chain of the body, there's this beautiful way that we are um, intertwined with fascia. Um, besides, you know, the, the structure of our, all of our tissues, our muscles, our bones, our organs, um, we have this beautiful fascial highway um, or matrix is probably a better way to describe it in our body that really supports our uh, mobility and our stability. It's this beautiful balance point between the two. If you are ever wanting to learn about fascia, there's a wonderful um, video that I can send you um, or send the link to you. It's called Strolling Under the Skin, and it's a microscopic view of the fascia in the body. So yeah, I see that thumbs up, Maggie. So if anybody else is interested in it, just um, shoot me a text or an email and I'll send it to you. Um, but it's really amazing how the fascia, we feel like fascia is this sturdy, strong stuff, right? And it is. I see you too, Paula. Um, it's this st sturdy, strong stuff in our body that really binds us, but it's also on a microscopic level, very fluid. It's very mobile. Um, it's very responsive to uh, the demands that we put up upon our body. It's quite remarkable how adaptable we are, both in our mind and in our body and in our spirit. I mean, think of all the ways that life just kind of subtly and drastically shifts for you and you just kind of roll with it, right? And our fascia just rolls with it. Um, we, we are nothing without our fascia. It's really wraps around every cell in our body. So the posterior chain of the body is this big fascial sheath that starts at the eyebrows and it rolls over the head and goes down the back line along the two sides of your spine, down your glutes, down the hamstrings, into the calves, all the way to the soles of your feet, to the bottom of your toes. So it really covers this whole posterior chain of the back body. And within that fascial chain, of course, is a lot of muscles that um, contribute to a lot of functional movement patterns that we have. So most of the time, a lot of the time we're slumped, right? We sit over computers, we hunch over cars, we sleep in beds, we do all these things that kind of round us. And the posterior chain is really about extension. The muscular strength of the posterior chain is about extension in the body. So when we slouch and hunch and slump, we have a lot of um, tension in those muscles because they're in a slightly elongated state. The muscles are in a slightly elongated state, but then they have to hold us up in that slightly elongated state. And this creates a lot of strain on the whole posterior chain. So it's not uncommon to have the base of your skull be a little tender and the muscles all in your neck and along your spine. And we get tension in our glutes and in our hamstrings. Even the bottom of our feet, you know, fascial issues in the bottom of our feet with plantar fasciitis. So today we're going to work with both um, strengthening and opening the posterior chain of the body. And really, most importantly, we're just going to get to know what's back there. You know, we kind of know what's in front of us way better than we know what's behind us. So we're going to open our eyes to the back of our body and get a little aware there. So let's close our eyes and sit up straight and tall. And for a moment, just kind of rock on whatever seat you're on. Maybe you're on the floor, maybe you're on a bolster or blanket, or maybe you're in a chair. So just have a little bit of mobility where you kind of do a little cat cow while you're sitting here of um, flexing your spine and then extending your spine. And just get to know that already before we even start our physical asana practice, we're kind of aware of what's back there. And then once you get comfortable, see if you can perch yourself on your pelvis well so that your spine has the sense of alignment. And um, you know, we, we lean into the day so much, even just leaning our head forward to concentrate on a person or some activity we're doing. Let's, let's concentrate on what's happening behind us. So let the head just ever so slightly come back so that it really is perched over the pelvis. Have a moment to let the shoulder blades find their way on the back. Let them enliven. See if you can get them to be awake and feel the shoulder blade, you know, the discs of the shoulder blade, these wide flat plates. See if we can drop them down and slightly in toward each other. Not enough where we're, we're squeezing between our shoulder blades, but an aliveness there. And then notice if this is difficult to maintain, if the slight 
concentric contraction of the muscles between our shoulder blades is we perceive it as more work than the other way when we're slunched over. So just be aware and find a lightness of being as best as you can. And notice when the back body supports that the breath can come, that the chest and heart can open. As you let the head feel balanced over the spine, can you melt a little bit? Can you release some of the ways that we hold tension in our neck to support our head? Let your body be filled with breath. So you are ready, place your palms together. And as you do so, try not to lose your awareness of the back body. Even bowing and placing the hands together can make us kind of become absent in the back of the heart. So refresh that strength and support. Offer an intention here. What is it that you can't see? What is behind you that you would like to have more vision, more awareness of? Maybe it's physically, maybe it's something much more esoteric that you're um, looking for and trying to be aware of. And now bring the thumbs, if they're not already, already there, to the sternum, okay? And then see if you can ever so slightly lift the sternum into the thumbs. Try not to push the rib cage, the bottom rib cage out. Try not to arch the low back to do this. See if you can do this just by the action of the shoulder blades supporting your heart. Let's relax. And notice if you're already a little bit more aware, a little fatigued in the muscles in the back of your body. Okay, let's come on, on to the floor. So come to lay down on the ground. As we often do in the beginning of our practice, let's just get horizontal first so we can sense the body. Okay, be aware. And notice what part of you is touching the ground. So you can sense into the full back body awareness at rest. Nothing has to work right now. We're just at ease. Feel the shoulder blades on the back, on the floor. Feel what part of your spine, if any, feels like it touches the ground. Feel the back of your head. Feel the pelvis. Feel the back of the calves heels, what part of the arms are resting on the floor. Just make contact with the back body on the ground. All right, now so go ahead and pick up your shoulders, slide the shoulder blades down the back a little bit so that the palms are open. And then see if you can rest here again. We don't have to push our chest up. We don't have to pop our floating ribs forward to feel that the shoulder blades are down on the back. Relax the back of the head. Notice that there's some ease somewhere that usually isn't there. All right, and then stretch the arms overhead and reach the right side, reach the left side, just come into that full sense of reaching and lengthening and opening. And then bring the knees into the chest and rock a little bit, swaying from side to side. All right, circle the knees a little bit, one direction, the other. Notice the back of the body now. You know, when we are 
ground it a little bit? Do you find that to be comfortable and easeful? Let's open the hips up. So pull the knees away from the midline and back in. Just find that way of being in your hip joints and a little bit of rolling around in the hip sockets. And then right knee into the chest, left leg long, open up the feet. Haven't touched into our feet yet, so wake them up. Roll ankles, wiggle toes. And then change sides. Left knee in, right leg long on the floor. Feel into the movement here. And then starfish your body, limbs wide. Open up. Now, when you have your arms overhead like this, what part of your spine leaves the floor? Can you feel a little bit of a back bend? And then exhale and round. And feel your back, your spine round a little bit. In a couple more times. Feeling the full body cat cow vibe where we extend and open and where we flex and condense. So as you find the extension, Feel the back body as you reach into space. Can you feel the back body? Exhale as you condense. Can you feel the back body lengthen? And relax your head onto the ground. Put your left foot onto the ground, right leg straight up into the air and wrap your fingers behind your right hamstring. Press your hamstring into your hands and let's flex and point the toe here a little bit. Keep moving your right femur bone away from the shoulder and open up the bottom of that posterior chain. You know, we've already felt the spine a little bit. Now let's feel into the legs. So feel the calf stretch open, the Achilles, stretch the heel up, spread the toes. See if you can feel that posterior chain all the way to the bottom of the foot. And then release, bring that knee into the chest and change sides, right foot on the floor, left, leg up in the air, interlace the hands the opposite way behind the left hamstring, press the hamstring into the palms, shoulders are away from the hip, hip is away from the shoulder, and then start to flex and point the toe here. So, you know, a lot of times we feel our hamstrings, um, we, can, we can stretch our hamstrings pretty easily, but we forget sometimes that that posterior chain really does travel to the bottom of our foot. So feel the foot, feel the Achilles, feel the calf. See if you can kind of loosen up some of the fascia. Fascia loves movement and it loves warmth. These are the things that really help to keep fascia as mobile and fluid as possible in the body. All right, release that. Starfish your body out. Big stretch. Exhale, knees into the chest. And then come over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. All right, so let's feel into the fullness of the spine now as you move into some cat cows. Feel the shoulder blades slide and glide, so toward each other and then away from each other. Feel how the tail and the head are just absolutely 100% part of this posterior chain. Loosening things up. And then move any way you want to move. You can do some rib rolls, some pelvis rolls, some neck and head rolls. And then stretch back towards child's pose. Take a nice, easy posture. Stretch your arms overhead if it's comfortable. Find the breathing body. Relax your neck. Full breaths in. Full breaths out. All right, let's walk the hands over to one side of the mat. So dropping some weight into the sit bones, relax your skull. Feel the ease against the back of your neck. So, you know, so much tension we can hold in our necks. Let's let it go. Come back to center, find the other side. So when I do this pose, I lift my hips off my heels a little bit more. Sometimes, sometimes they stay low. So experiment with where your body wants to be in the space to find that fullness of your rib cage. Relax your neck. All right, come back up on tall fours. Move that spine around a little bit more. 
Inhale, arm up in the air. Exhale, slide the arm through. Be very gentle with deep twisting in the beginning of your practice. You don't have to go super far to get some space between your shoulder blades. Find the breath. Inhale, reach that arm all the way back up. Place the hand down onto the ground, switch sides. Arm lifting to the sky. Exhale and slide that shoulder down. Gaze toward the floor, breathe well. Inhale, reach that arm all the way back up and place the hand down. Curl the toes under, find your way here. So have this beautiful place as you come up into dog pose where it's our first posture where we get to feel the fullness of the whole back line of the body. Ground through your hands, four corners of your hands, ground through the balls of your toes, all five toes. Once you have that yielding, yield and then push to reach through your whole spine. Bend your knees as much as you want so that you can lift the sit bones. And then once you get the long spine, try just a millimeter of straightening your legs, just a millimeter more. Stretch open the balls of your feet. Stretch open the soles of your feet. Reach your heels back toward the wall behind you. Lift the sit bones up. Broaden the hamstrings. Feel your breath. And walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Bend your knees. Feel free to shake. Feel free to rock. Feel free to do anything that helps you kind of loosen and open the back chain of the body. Bobble your head around. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine can get longer. Open up through your spine, so the thigh bones. When we have our hands on blocks or legs, we can straighten our legs. We can get that fullness of lifting the sit bones high, thigh bones back, spread open the bones of your feet, lift your arches both on the inside of your foot and the outside of the middle foot, reach it up to the grinds. And then exhale, and melt and fold again. Drop your sit bones, lift your chest, rise all the way up. Open the heart, lean back a little bit, stretch open through the heart. Okay, open the chest, start to feel the work in the back chain of the body. Let's cactus, open the arms here and feel the breath. Okay, light things up in the back of your body, start to strengthen. Inhale, reach the arms up. Let's imagine that we're pulling ourselves up on a pull-up bar. So pull down with some extra weight to open the chest and then reach it back up. One more time, pull your elbows down, feel the back body, do the work of this. Reach the arms up and exhale, and float forward, round the spine a little bit, drop your chin. Inhale, lengthen the spine, sit bones come high, half lift. Exhale and fold again. Let's step the left foot back, right foot is gonna come forward, hands can be on blocks if you want, or the floor. And let's start to open our legs a little bit more, stretching through your hamstring as you open the, leg, the front leg into some extension, and then come back into a lunge. Follow the rhythm of your breath. Pay attention to have your, how your feet feel. So when we come into straightening the front leg, do you lose the big toe? Can you ground it down? Open up the bottom of your feet, square the hips. And steady yourself in your lunge and rise up. See what it feels like to lift and lengthen. Now, perhaps your arms are comfortable up head, overhead. Maybe your hands, maybe your shoulders are taking a break today and you're having your hands down. So it doesn't matter where your arms end up. Still feel the shoulder blades slide down the back. Can you integrate the ribs so you're not using the back body to push the front body forward? We're integrating front and back. Let's come into cactus arms here. Open the chest. Feel the line of the back body. Shoulder blades down. And then exhale and push away. Stay low. Stretch your arms. If that's uncomfortable, bring them back behind you, whatever is self supporting. Breathing deeply. And then place your back knee down onto the ground. Let's come into half Hanamasana here. So 
Straightening the front leg blocks are really good for this. If you wanna have your hands on some blocks, you can even have one block stacked underneath the other block on the inside edge of your foot, whatever feels good. So make sure your toes are pointing up instead of turning out. Draw the right hip back and down. Lift through your chest, find your breath. We're gonna find a little twist here. So take the left hand onto the block, right arm reaches in the air. Still being very active with an inner spiral of that right thigh. Sit bone down. Okay, exhale, come back to a lunge. Find your breath. Lift the back knee up off the ground and come forward, fold in half. Relax your neck. Halfway lift, spine grows a little bit. Exhale. Melt, relax the head. Notice when you hold tension in your neck, you're always trying to hold your head up. Take the left foot forward and the right foot back. Find your way into a lunge here. And let's start moving as you're ready. Move with breath. We're straightening the front leg. It doesn't have to go all the way straight. Just go where your body goes and then bend it again. Notice when you straighten your legs, stay grounded through the balls of your toes, especially your big toe. Can you allow the hip to reach back, let the femur bone settle into the back of the joint a little bit? All right, let's come into a lunge, find that pathway of grounding. And then rise on up. Now, if you have your arms down, you know, if you're having a down arm day, that's fine. You can still work with the awareness of the back chain of the body by opening palms up and opening your hands out. That might be a nice variation to feel the back body. You can always do this with the arms overhead or cactusing the arms. See what feels good, what's available to you to enliven the back of the body without arching the lumbar spine and pushing the ribs forward. So, Integrate your core, find that sense of stability. Okay, and then if you can, arms up, big breath, cactus, open the arms, and then we're gonna push an imaginary wall. Now, if it's too much to keep the arms out there, bring them back. Support yourself with your spine and your core and your legs, ground into the earth with your feet. Back of the next stays long. And then release the hands down to the ground. Oh, keep that foot forward. Sorry, put your knee down onto the ground. Come into half on the masana on this side. Drop your hip. You can always stack up more height underneath you. You can hold a chair or a piece of furniture. There's lots of ways of doing this posture to support you. One of the tendencies is our inner foot wants to collapse. So stretch through the big toe and the inner heel, roll the inner thigh down, and then take the outer hip down as well. Rise up and let's start to twist. So we're going to the left, twisting to the left, open the chest, shoulder blades down, hip down, stretch through the foot. Keep lifting through the spine. Release that, come back into a lunge, hands down off to the ground, step back to dog pose. Feel the full body. So feel how you know, awake you're getting, okay? As you feel yourself into your practice, are you more alive in the body? Are you embodied? Inhale, come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady here. See if you cannot overpower the pose with your chest and core. Feel the back body help. So of course we're using our chest and core, but we're also using the muscles along our spine. Breathing well. All right, go ahead and put your feet down, or knees down rather, and come all the way to the floor. Roll the shoulder blades down. Before we come into a full cobra, over the hands off the ground and lift up here. Shoulder blades down the back and lie in the back body. What's back there? Feel into what's back there. Keep the neck long, integrate the core. Are your glutes lazy or are they active? And then exhale, 
and melt to come back down. Full cobra pose. A little support of the hands now, so don't go too far. And then exhale and melt to come back down. Come up onto all fours. Move the spine around. We're going to do a little work to turn on our hamstrings. And then we're going to do a little work to turn on our glutes. So grab a block. I'll show this from the side. We're going to come onto our belly and we're going to put the block between, you know, you're going to tuck the block with your calf. Okay, so on your right leg, you're taking the block behind your hamstring. Find your breath. Okay, and we're just going to slightly try to lift the thigh off the floor. Now put your hands so that your forehead is underneath your palms, you have a nose spot. And we're integrating our core here. Probably should have done something to turn on the, the uh, transverse abdominus a little bit, but turn it on now. And as you lift your leg a millimeter or an inch off the floor, it will not go far. See if you can feel the hamstrings and the glutes work in concert with each other. You might get a cramp. So if that happens, just stop and stretch. Okay, and then release and let that go. Put the block into the left, you know, behind the left thigh and hug on to it with, oh, I'm already getting, I'm already getting the cramp and I haven't even done anything yet. So if that happens to you, just let it rest or stretch, whatever feels good. And we're gonna integrate the core of the body, feel the work and then lift that left leg um, up an inch or so off the floor. Okay, and it doesn't, it can just be a teeniest bit. It does not have to be a lot. Integrate the center of your body, find your glutes turning on and your hamstrings simultaneously. Resting the head and then relax and melt. Let's go ahead and curl the toes under and lift back to dog pose. Extend through the spine. If you got a cramp, maybe that's a good thing. You know, you're turning on muscles. A lot of us, because we sit in chairs all day long, we can get kind of lazy in our glutes and in our hamstrings. And they're very important muscles to stabilize our backs, to keep strong, to help our backs stay stable. So let's feel into the length of them now. Open things up. Feel free to pedal or move in whatever way you want. Find the breath. Inhale the right leg up in the air. Turn on the glutes, maybe pulse a couple of times. And exhale, bring your foot forward. You can lift your back heel or turn it down. So veer one or press lunge, whichever feels uh, stable and good for your body. Inhale and rise up again. See if you can turn on the glutes and the hamstrings of the back leg. See if you can press your front heel into the ground to turn on the glutes and the hamstrings of the front leg. Integrate with your core. Find the breath. And release the hands down onto blocks if you want, or the floor coming into half splits. Lengthen through your spine here. So it's easy to you know, get really lazy in our glutes. So turn them on. Inner spiral that thigh in the air. Extend through the spine. Feel those spinal muscles. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, tuck knee next to knee instead of behind the knee, just curl in like a one-legged squat. And then like you weigh a thousand pounds, push off that standing leg. Feel your hamstring and your glutes stay turned on as you slowly, slow-mo, come back into uh, half splits. Lifting that leg in the air and then place your foot down onto the ground, fold. We're gonna go through that backwards. So we'll start in half splits, reach the left leg down and the right leg up in the air, okay? So finding that engagement. Notice if you have one side that's a little harder to turn on than the other side. You have glutes that work better than on one side than the other. Extend the spine, find your breath, root into the earth, exhale. Slowly squat, one-legged squat, knee next to knee. And as you start to straighten up, push through your entire foot. Turn the glutes and the hamstrings on, a thousand pounds of weight. Stretch that leg up in the air. Two legs are engaged. Find the breath. Now we're gonna step back to crescent lunge or veer one, your choice. 
Rise up when you're ready. Put your arms in a place that supports you. And then work to engage the back of your legs. So press the front heel into the ground. Feel the toes. Light up the hamstring and the glutes on that front leg. And then extend through the back leg. See if you can feel the glutes and the hamstring help you to extend that leg. Open up through the spine. Find the breath. Exhale and bring the hands down onto the ground. Dog pose. Let things warm and lengthen and stretch. Breathing well. Come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady. Integrating here. Find the breath, put your knees down onto the ground and stay on all fours. Bird dog, so stretch, let's see. Your right leg behind you and left arm out in front of you. Now we get to integrate that full posterior chain from the top of your head to the toes in the air. See if you can feel the front and the back body both supporting you. So we're not relying on any one aspect of our strength. Breathe, let your breath move your rib cage. Is it lazy somewhere? Can you feel the fullness of both glutes, both hamstrings, press your shin into the ground? And then release and melt, change sides. Now, when you do the opposite side, see if you can pay attention and notice if you have discrepancies. So does one side of your glutes, you know, like, oh, turn on, turn on really quick and the other you have to kind of coax open or do you feel very balanced between the two sides? How about the spine muscles? Do they feel stronger on one side versus the other? Integrate the ribs, the core, let your breath move your ribs sideways, relax the base of the skull. So try not to pick up the head. It's got enough work to do without lifting your heavy head. And then place that hand and knee down, child's pose. Just let your glutes and hamstrings relax, open up the spine and breathe. Okay, now this variation is a little trickier than what we did with the block before because we're up off the floor. So we're gonna come into that same bird dog feeling and we're gonna put the block behind our leg again. Now, because we're gonna keep the hands down onto the ground for this one, but because we're in this posture and we don't have the floor as feedback, we often can arch our back. So try not to be here, integrate into the core of your body. All right, so start to lengthen your spine, integrate your core, and then lift your knee. And it can just be like a millimeter or an inch. We're not trying to go into deep extension, but we're working with extension in the back of the body. Feel your breath. If you get a hamstring cramp, you can just stay there or stop, whatever works for you. And then go ahead and release. We're gonna put the block behind the left leg now. Lift that knee up in the air. Okay. So we're kind of grabbing onto the block with our hamstring, with our uh, calf, and then integrate. Integrate the core, feel the yielding of your hands. Find your other leg working too, so press your shin into the ground. Inner spiral your thigh in the air just a little bit so we're not turning the leg out. And then try to lift the knee just a little bit without losing the stability in your pelvis. So the tailbone is toward the knee, the pubic bone is toward the belly button. We're integrating the core. How is your breath? And then relax and melt. Go ahead and come all the way up to dog pose and just enjoy. Stretch your hamstrings. Notice if there's some fibers of your hamstrings that maybe have some new sensation. Breathing well. Feel free to pedal your feet. Extend through your spine. We're gonna lift the left leg all the way up in the air. Exhale and bring your left foot forward to a lunge again. Okay, rise up. We're gonna plant the back heel down onto the ground. So Vera one now. And reach your arms back behind you and lengthen forward. Press your heel into the ground, both heels into the ground. Extend your back leg. As you press your front heel, feel the glutes turn on. 
Maybe the arms start to come forward in front of you. Maybe they stay back. And have just a breath or two of rising upward. Feel the spine. All right. And then as you're ready, we're going to hop up onto that foot. Where I know we're starting with your left foot, so I'm purposely kind of freaking you out going with your non dominant leg first. Extend and lengthen. Extend and lengthen. So there should be some fatigue going on. Feel into that fatigue. See if you can still root to rise. Use your glutes on both sides. And then we're going to tip that knee forward. Come on up. Reach the leg in the air, reach the arms in the air two feet, come down onto the ground. Find your breath, exhale, arms down, chair pose, arms back. Stay low here, palms facing the floor, shoulder blades moving on the back, integrate the core. Start to rise up with your arms back there. Press your heels, turn on the backs of your legs. Now reach the arms up and feel how strong the back chain of your body is. Okay, rise all the way up and release the hands down. Pause here for a moment. Take your feet hip width apart, Tadasana. Finding the breath. As you're standing here, I'm hoping you have a little fatigue in the back of your body. Notice, you know, if you slump forward, if you kind of lean into a hip, if we push our pelvis forward all the way as we try to not work our body, we lose that strong sensation we've just been having. So yield into the ground, feel that the springy back body is just as supportive as the front of your body, your core, your thighs. Can you feel the aliveness in the back of you? Turn the palms open, shoulder blades slide down and a little toward each other. Okay, and we're gonna just step the right foot, I'm sorry, the left foot back and come into Virabhadrasana one on this side. All right, so finding a lunge, ground through your feet, and we're gonna lean forward with our arms back. Engage your triceps, feel the shoulder blades, feel the whole back line of the body, integrate that with the core. Crown stretches all the way to your back, to your back foot. Now, if you feel able, you can lift your arms overhead and feel a full integration of the back line. Find the breath, try not to take it all in the base of your skull, press into your feet, and rise up, Virabhadrasana one, integrate the center of your body, your core is here for you. Press your feet, heels in, and then exhale, lean, lean forward, arms can be back next to you. If you're feeling so obliged, your arms can be out in front of you, or even out to the side, or even cactus, or even, you know, wherever, wherever you want to be. Find the breath, engage your glutes, your hamstrings, deep breaths, and then we're going to tip forward, bring that knee up, lift the arms to the sky, two feet down onto the ground, chair pose. Put your arms in whatever place is soothing and supportive for your body. So our hamstrings are bent, so it's a little bit different than when we move into extension but there's still this grounding through the back of our body. Feel the back of your body support you in relationship to the front. So you, can you feel the balance between the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads? Can you feel the balance in the back of your spine and the front of your core? A thousand pounds you weigh, push up, open your chest, and then exhale and float forward. Take your feet as wide as the mat. Come into a forward fold, relax your neck. Hands can be on the floor or blocks. All right, inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt and fold. 
step back to a plank. Feel how the front body and the back body working in harmony. Lift the left leg off the floor, just hover it a little bit. Integrate. So feel the 360 of your body. Put that foot down, lift the right foot a little bit off the floor. Find the breath. Put that foot down, come down to the ground in any way that serves you. Roll the shoulders a little bit here. Find the breath. We're going to take the arms back down at your sides, palms facing the floor. Inhale and lift everything up. So feel the full back line now, both legs, both sides of your spine, both shoulder blades, the back of your neck. Everything's working. Feel the breath. Where along that chain is a little quiet for you. So turn your head one way or the other, pick up your feet and windshield wiper your knees left and right. Okay, last thing we'll do that's cross hemisphere work. So arms can be, if you're comfortable, put your arms out in front of you. If you're not comfortable with that, put your arms next to you, okay? Find your breath. We're going to lift right leg and left arm. And then exhale and melt it down. Other side, left leg, right arm. Keep the back of the neck long. Where along the chain is missing a link? Find the links. One more time, the other side. And then relax, turn your head the other way, pick up your feet, windshield wiper your knees. Hands down as if you were gonna go into cobra pose, but we're not. Bring your elbows, drop them toward your ribs, there's a lot of space in your traps, take your upper traps. Take a deep breath in. We're gonna work with the lower traps. Take the bottom tips of your shoulder blade toward your low, toward your sacrum and lift on up. Find your breath, legs stay down. And then exhale. One more time. Elbows down, shoulder blade tips down, lift on up. Exhale and melt. Come up on tall fours and move that spine around. So, you know, we're doing a lot of work with some very um, important stabilizing muscles in the body. So let things free up a little bit. Deepening the breath. All right, come back to child's pose. Breathing well. And one more back body sequence to do, and then we'll switch gears and start stretching a lot. But first, we're just going to do a little bit of a bridge sequence. So <clears throat> you need a block. Okay. So we're gonna start just in a classic bridge. Press the four corners of your feet into the ground. Inhale and rise up. Tops of the shoulders, so feel those shoulder blades. Open the chest, find the breath. Okay, now so often there's a yoga cue to just relax your glutes and we don't wanna relax our glutes. We don't wanna overdo our glutes, but our glutes are important for this posture that they are our hip extenders and that's what we're doing. We're extending our hips in this pose. So press the four corners of your feet and lift. Now to feel the hamstrings and the glutes turn on, Pull all four corners of your feet toward your shoulders. Okay, and then feel the awareness of your quadriceps. Push all four corners of your feet away from your shoulders. And okay, now grab the block that's nearby you. Let's come down and rest while we put the block in. We're gonna put the block in between our thighs and lift on up again. Now let's try those sequence again. 
Go four corners of your feet toward your shoulders. Push four corners of your feet away from your shoulders. Neck is soft. And now hug the block to turn on your inner thighs, the inner hamstrings as well. And now the four corners of your feet pull apart away from each other. There are so many muscles that are involved in bridge pose. It's not just your glutes, but we don't wanna ignore our glutes. There are prime movers in this pose. Come down and rest. Turn your head from side to side, make sure your neck is nice and neutral. You can do this last um, sequence without the block. Okay. We, you, you, your block will fall in a moment if you're using it. So you can start with it if you want. We're gonna find our way up to bridge pose. And when you do this, find all four corners of your feet. So if you press evenly through the four corners, you will get all of those muscle groups to turn on. Now walk your right foot an inch or so toward the midline. And we're gonna lift the left leg in the air. Remember the four corners of your foot. Breathe your way here. Find your breath. Put your foot down and come down to rest. Windshield wiper your knees and windshield wiper your head in opposition to your knees. Full breaths. Relax the body. Okay, let's find some ground again. This is the last one we're gonna do before we kind of move into a totally different direction. So, you know, give the juice to your body. We're gonna come up to a full bridge, four corners of each foot. Breathe, keep your neck relaxed. Walk the left foot toward the midline an inch or so. Lift the right leg in the air. You can bend your knee too. You don't have to have your legs straight up in the air. Now notice your pelvis. Did it get all wonky? Balance your hips. Breathing well. Press four corners of foot. Okay, and then relax and let everything come down. One more time, windshield wipering knees and head in opposition of each other. Right, rest for a moment. Bring your right, you need a strap. So go grab your strap. If you don't have a strap, it's okay. okay. Right knee into the chest, stretch your left leg long. Move your feet around. Wrap the strap around your right foot and lift that leg straight up in the air. Melt the back of your head. So it's not just about it lengthening the hamstrings and the calf here it's, and the glutes, but it's also about resting the back line in your spine and all the way to your skull. So check, check in with your head, make sure your shoulders and neck are relaxed. Move the right hip away from your right shoulder. Breathing well. Take the strap into the right hand. Open the leg out to the right. Feeling the inner thigh stretch. We didn't do any externally rotated standing poses today. You know, the kind of bread and butter of our practice. So just notice as you open your inner thighs and kind of rotate your femur bone into some external rotation. And then lift that leg straight up. We're gonna take the strap into the left hand and cross the right leg past the midline over to the left. Right hip is moving away from right shoulder. Maybe you turn your head to the right as well. And then lift that leg two feet. 
come into the strap now and enjoy the length of your spine. So just let the spine start to stretch a little bit. Relax the neck. Left foot comes into the strap, right foot on the ground. So either right foot on the ground or right leg on the ground. And how do you know which to do? Just check in with your pelvis. So when you, your foot is on the ground or when your leg is on the ground, which makes you feel most neutral in your pelvis? You'll get the same stretch in your hamstring either way. So we wanna keep a neutral pelvis. Reach your foot up, drop your hip down. Flex your toes. You can even have a little point and flex for a moment. Hook that strap around the heel. How's your breath? Relax your shoulders. Okay, let's open the left leg out to the left. Round yourself, try not to roll with the leg. Only take the leg as far as the body can support. Enjoy the inner thigh, the inner hamstring stretch. Relax your neck and head. Breathe deeply. And lift that leg, take the strap over to the right. Left foot is crossing midline over to the right. Hip is away from shoulder, neck and head are relaxed. Find your breath. Feel the four corners of your left foot stretch instead of collapse. that leg up. Two feet in the strap again. Feel the extension through your spine. And then strap off and feel free to come into happy baby pose. You can rock a little bit. Just let the muscles along your spine open. Feet down, lift your hips up, scoot them to the right, your knees up and drop them to the left and enjoy a twist. Turn your head in opposition to your knees. Breathing deeply. Now, lift the knees, lift your hips and scoot them to the left, knees come up and drop them to the right, breathe well. lift the knees up. Now you might find after a back body practice like this that laying flat on your back isn't as comfortable as you might want it to be. And if that's the case, you can always take your two blocks and put them long ways against each other like that and then put a blanket or something on top of them to create a little support underneath your knees for Shavasana. And of course, anything you want. You can put your calves up on the couch, 
you can put a little support under your head. So just find what's available in your little basket of toys at your house, whatever props you have to help you come into a lot of ease. So rest the back body on the floor. See if you can, just as when we began, there's this deep sense of surrender that you can feel where you touch the earth, be supported by that touch. Melt the skull. See if you can relax through the brain. Find a deep sense of ease come over you. The shoulders are melty. The head is so very heavy with the eyes and jaw and all your bones, soft. Feel that your shoulder blades are now no longer needed for support, but they can melt. The arms can melt. Feel the deep weight of your pelvis and legs. Let your breath travel deeply in your body. Settle your bones and then imagine you have no bones. Only breath. Allow yourself to come back to your breath. Don't move just yet, just melt one more time. Let all the tension that your body might feel turn it into a slack line. And then envision this fascial line in the back of your body. Feel your eyebrows, rest your eyes. And then trail along and melt like 
a little warm fluid from the eyebrows over the head, down the back of the head to the base of the skull, along the two sides of your spine, down your neck, down your spine, traveling all the way down to your low back, Feeling the sacrum running right through your glutes, the backs of your legs, the hamstrings, the backs of the knees, the calves, the Achilles, the heels, the soles of the feet to the to bottom of your toes. Melt that whole line into the floor. And as you are ready, invite movement. Maybe turning your head or maybe moving your hands or feet. And eventually finding your way onto your side. Take your time. Use your arms to help lift yourself up. First, just put your hands on your knees, open your chest and feel that your back body is there. Rest it, relax it into support. Big open chest breath. Palms together, reach your heart to your thumbs without pinching anything. Open the heart, bow just a bit, and offer your practice outward. Share your energy with someone to send your love and care to. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a beautiful day.